uh, what should I say, discouragements, I guess, with this, is that people are going to say, well, you know, I'd love to have a rain garden, but I'm not going to go, you know, use the plan and, you know, sp spend money on a rain garden when you're spent you, when you're asking me to spend so much on my taxes. I think it'll be a very, very large disincentive to people doing that. And I got real pushback <laughs> when I mentioned that at the meeting. Um, somebody in particular who was a business manager over there didn't like that. And um, it's it was primarily because they have that program right now, the Rain Ready program that they're very proud of, and they just rolled it out, and it sounded wonderful until <laughs> rain. you went to this. <laughs> so you know there are a lot of concerns. So keep you know keep reading things, keep uh, asking <laughs> questions. We should all go to meetings at some point, and uh, just stay with it. So it'll be a while before they get to the, the next meeting, I'm sure. And the trustees are well aware of all these issues. They're maybe not the aerial photos, and that's a big one. But. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Director? Okay. Um, I, you know, I will just say in the interest of time, <laughs> seeing as how we're, we're about 90 minutes into our meeting here, um, I am more than happy to provide an overview and summary of my report, um, but I think maybe this month I'd, I'd like to throw it out to you all and see if there's anything in particular that caught your eye or that you'd like me to speak to specifically, and uh, we can kind of handle it in that, that approach. Well, your opening uh, um, uh, description is about the summer reading program, and I just and normally I think they see something in there for adults, and I see things that go for kids through grade nine. So I wasn't sure if I just missed something. We or? definitely have an adult okay. um, that's all program. Much, that's, um, okay. if you, when you're downstairs this evening, if you want to pick up a log, okay. it looks like this, and the reading log. You can keep track of what you're reading, and um, as you complete this and fill this out, there are incentive prizes that are also available for adults as well, yeah. all generously funded by the friends of the library. Nice. I'm working on my condo. <laughs> that was my, yeah, that was my uh, I was very impressed by what Ruth Bell and the other, um, who's the other woman who does so many programs off, off library, uh, really impressed with what they do. Yeah, this is great to include this. Yeah. Yes, Alice Joseph. Yeah. I mean, they are just remarkable, and they're they're not just remarkable in how much they do but the creativity that goes along with it is astonishing. I just, I love reading about it. Um, that really impressed me. Can you do just a quick summary of how you think the strategic plan initiatives are coming along? Because I see it all, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's easier to see it on a dashboard as opposed to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of our progress to the strategic plan um, objectives, I mean, as you can see, um, this, this method of including mm -hmm. what, what our activities are month by month, um, yes. I think is a great way to, to capture just how this is on our radar and we're continuously working on the progress towards that. Mm -hmm. um, how do I feel that we're at in terms of, the, of our progress to those goals? I think we're, we're very well along with our progress on these goals. I'm, I'm satisfied to see that the way that the staff is even interpreting those goals mm -hmm. and advancing additional initiatives beyond, I, um, the, I think, the mm -hmm. anticipated uh, plan when this was um, created just a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yes, I, I think the, that we're right on target and um, that we're going to only continue to grow this and, and continue to work on things that are even past the date that we've got the look at data on here, but this is just an ongoing program for us. Um, th there is a strategic plan objective that um, I've not commented on, and I suppose I ought to bring this up as well. We have an outdoor renovation project that's underway, so I should give you a little bit of an update. You get email updates yeah. on this as well, um, but um, when you came in this evening, you might have noticed that there was a little sample section of the bluestone papers mm -hmm. that, that's out. So that's the next phase of our project. So with all of the um, the concrete in place and with the infrastructure for um, the snow melt system obviously beneath that, our electrical, uh, that will be for all the bollards and the various lighting improvements around the grounds, and with the irrigation system uh, sleeves, all of that in place, the next phase is to go into um, the, the work that Twin Oaks, our, our landscaping contractor, is going to be working on. So today, um, they completed the stone base that's going to go around the perimeter of um, the lawn. 
uh, that will have the bluestone paving put on top of it. Um, so there'll be a little bit of sand that'll go on top of that. The bluestone will come out on top of that. Um, and then once the bluestone is all set in place, both around the, the ring that's um, at the front lawn, um, as well as the walkway um, through the, um, the, the native garden, then we can actually get into the part that everyone's most excited about, and that's our planting. So the plantings is really the, the one of the finishes, uh, the final phases of the project. Um, we do anticipate that the bluestone paving will likely take about two weeks or so of, of actual labor. There's a lot of handwork that's done. Um, if you look at some of the pallets that are out on the grounds, I don't know if you'll see them at night here, but there are some pallets that are out there right now that are loaded up with large slabs of bluestone. Uh, the crews have to do a lot of handwork with this. They, they chip them into shape. Um, so that's kind of how they're able to configure them and, and, and make the, the shape out there on the lawn. So once that two weeks of labor is completed and the bluestone is in place, uh, the lawn will be replaced and then all of the plantings that go into the, uh, the native garden will go in. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, targeted goal is still um, the middle of July and I think punch list items will be wrapping up uh, by the end of that month and we hope to have the project completed by the end of July then. I have a question about the <coughs> getting the native plants. I mean, have these things been reserved already? Yes. Okay. Yep. When we did because the planning submittal, that was what, them. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All of our finishes have been reserved, so all the, all the parts and products of the, of the project are there. That's really important. How are you going to protect the grass and the plantings until they so yeah, speed. so we've got snow fencing um, right now. That's part of the solution to, to keep folks off of that. Um, there won't we won't have the chain link up, but there will be some selective use of snow fencing to okay. help them get established. Mm -hmm. Good. Could I come come back to the uh, yes. what the staff members have been doing? <clears throat> Ruth Bell page. Well, I think it was the first page, I guess. Anyway, she said I visited two class classes and brought a zipline stem activity. Do we know what that is? I have to get back to you specifically on what <laughs> okay. the zip line activity is. I'll, I, I'll I don't believe her. that children were actually zip lining through the trees, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm sure they weren't. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> Who's laughing? I was envisioning <laughs> There's your, some strange things. Yeah. Yes. Use your reserve. <laughs> we'll do that for our out, outward bound board retreat next time. <laughs> 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 that sounds good. If you can make it to the end, you get to stay on the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Were there any other questions or comments on the director's report? Any response report? to removing the bottom shells down in the lower level? Or is that just sort of getting started? I, we're, we're kind of on, on in progress with that right now. I think the overall objective with maintenance of the collections is the accessibility and promotion of all those assets. Um, having things on what we call the bottom shelf, mm -hmm. I do not call that a shelf. That's not a shelf. It never should have had collections on it in the first place. Um, it's Yes, it's, it's storage, but um, the, the librarianship school that I subscribe to, that's not that's not where you would put your collection. So our goal is to get the collection um, up and accessible at eye level where everyone can see it, and to, to go one further to create a little bit more promotion of the materials that are in those areas. So I'd like to see more face-out merchandising of the collections to help people uh, discover stuff that they might not have known was in that area. Let me just give you a quick shout out on that. In the front, um, that face-up merchandising, I picked up this book I otherwise never would have. And uh, I'm going to do a Jan Barsh just a little later and give a little anecdote about a library I read in it, but I really like how <laughs> that, that front-facing merchandise does. Uh, uh, it made a lot of sense to me. Got me. Excellent. Yeah. It works. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else from the director's report? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank I you. Just, could I just make a broad statement <laughs> that I think the work you have done on this renovation project is like El Supremo. <laughs> I mean, I could never handle something this, this this convoluted and, you know, popping up with problems every day and thinking unkindly of the weatherman <laughs> <laughs> and all that yeah. other thing. You yeah. remember yeah. his actual title is Weather Guesser. Uh, yes. <laughs> Nobody That's knows. Very <laughs> Nobody knows. Well, oh, yeah. our director That's... has guessed beyond the guess in order to <laughs> put all this together and get get done what you have done. And, Any uh, problem solving the pipe thing sticking up? 
Yeah, so that's an, another element. Um, so yeah, so so two two things. Thank you, Jan. I, I appreciate that, and mm -hmm. I really want to give a lot of credit to Shales McNutt Construction. Yes. Um, our construction manager has been an incredible troubleshooter and has saved us a lot of grief. Um, it's, it was a wonderful decision to retain his services. Good. Um, Yes. Uh, one of the one of the we've there there are lots of challenges. The weather has been a consistent challenge for us. Um, one of the curveballs that we did have more recently was um, the air intake and exhaust for our snowmelt system boiler. Um, the architectural plan for this at the outset of the project and what we approved um, had a design to build solution. And that's all fine and good. Um, what ultimately happened when we when we installed the boilers, we realized that there were some pipes that, that need to come out of this. Um, in order for the boiler to function, it has to have air that comes in and air that goes out. Um, and um, there are a lot of requirements. There's code requirements for this. We brought out the state inspector to take a look at the system and to make a proposal for us for how this would work. Uh, the boiler is, is located in uh, what we call the 900s room in the lower level. This is adjacent to the uh, the Friends uh, book sale room, uh, Books Down Under. Uh, so there's a small um, room in there that was many years ago used as an air intake system. Um, we've located the boiler in there. It's adjacent to where the gas meter is. It makes a lot of great sense. It was a great solution. Um, that said, there's this piping that needs to come out, and that <laughs> piping has a number of, of code requirements that are associated with that. Um, so it has to come outside of the building. We can't route it through the in interior of the building. Um, it would have tremendous impact to the way that the, um, that the uh, media room is used um, and would affect potentially future renovations um, of that space. So our decision making was we want to route this thing on the outside of the building. At the same time, our architect was taking exception to the fact that we had surface-mounted conduit for electrical on the outside of the building, and we were able to remove that, but now we're putting in two four-inch pipes that are going to go on the outside of the building, and they are a little <laughs> bit of an eyesore. Um, the solution is that the air intake, uh, that pipe can be four feet tall um, above grade, so that doesn't need to go up to the roof. Um, the exhaust um, line really needs to go well above where that intake is, and um, in an effort to try to contain the um, aesthetic of all of that and to make it um, less obtrusive, um, we're looking to route that back into the building and then vent it out onto the roof. Um, so we're, we're evaluating a number of proposals for this, but I think that was the, that was the methodology that was recommended from um, not only the plumbing uh, installer, but also from the, uh, the state inspector uh, recommended that we take that approach. Um, there's a, again, there's a lot of code that goes into this. Um, are there ways that we can abate the appearance of it to make it look, it, there, there are two four inch PVC pipes. I mean, they're pretty substantial in size. I think like, um, you know, Jan's uh, water bottle there is, is probably approximate to the size of what that thing looks like. A white four foot tall PVC pipe coming out right in front of the front of the library is not what any of us really want to look at. We're evaluating, um, could we wrap it in vinyl? Um, make it match the mullions on the building so it would kind of blend in. Maybe pick one of the bricks and say we want it to look like that color. Could we paint it? Um, so we're evaluating all of those things. Is there any possibility of concealing mm -hmm. it behind any plant material? Right. So the, the four foot tall section, yes. We feel that we could accomplish that, although there isn't a native that would fit oh. in that space that would meet that those principles. So. Um, holding true to our original guiding principles of the project, um, we, we're kind of we're in a wait and see mode with our plant mm -hmm. situation there. Um, I'm sorry, I, there was something else that I just heard and I, I, I missed my thought on that. Bike rack, I said bike rack. Yeah. 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 Uh, alas, no. we can't attach anything to it. Um, yeah. Other things that we could do to conceal it that we had discussed, um, you could put some galvanized piping over it um, and kind of have an enclosure. Um, we do have an existing condition like that in the back of the building in the alley. If you see that, there's a pipe that runs the full uh, three stories of the building back there. Um, it does not look attractive when you try to contain a pipe with a larger mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, galvanized metal piece around it. So <laughs> at the front of the building, we don't want to do that. Yeah. There was discussion of doing something whimsical. Could it look like like a, a tiger, tiger tail or something, and you could kind of make it look like that. I think maybe we'd like to try to do something a little bit more conservative and have it blend <laughs> into the building. Um, so stay tuned. You will see some, some piping on the outside of the building. Um, we will try to conceal it as much as we possibly can. Totally good. <laughs> it's, it's the little things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have anything from ILA or? Um, that's you. 
I mean, um, not in particular, um, but the big picture to be aware of is uh, tonight. I mean, I think I said this last month, so I don't need to repeat it. Uh, so nothing for me. Okay. The uh, conference uh, next year has been set. It'll be held in October 22nd to 24th, 2019 at the Tinley Park County something. Uh, my printer ran out of convention center. convention center. Thank you. And if you're a trustee, it's a good time to go because there's a whole trustee section that goes over a mm -hmm. lot of things. Yeah. And, and the library will pick it up. So strongly encourage that. There was an article in there talking that we're talking about maker spaces and maybe small maker spaces and I won't go into details but this is titled no space no problem make many maker spaces and with the development of the basement or the lower level coming up this might be something you know, that we want to take a look at um, there were two uh, there was a legislative session in Springfield uh, which came to the close at the end of May is that when you came back? June 2. Okay. <laughs> uh, this this is, has to do with the state budget um, containing money for libraries. Uh, let's see. There's good news on the federal level. The House Appropriations Committee approved its 